Hey there, it's David Earl from Pure Mind with another tip and trick for you. So, let's pretend that somebody brought you a song. It's a guitar and vocal song that they recorded themselves without a click, and you want to do some production around it. Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to get its tempo. So, there is the beat mapping way, which is basically you select something like the guitar, and under the beat mapping track, you would see all the individual transients of the guitar and start to line it up. So you'd line up the first note, and then you'd find where bar two started, and then that would give you a kind of good general starting tempo. Now, the first thing you want to do before you even try anything like that is make sure that you lock your two regions here, the guitar and the vocal, down to the, their absolute position on the timeline. Because if you start messing with tempo, then the region will start to drift because the amount of time that takes up this space has changed. But when you do absolute time, not relative time. These are locked to hours, minutes, seconds, and frames, which aren't that flexible, or else we'd have problems with the time continuum, right? So I'm gonna go to the guitar track here, and I'll show you my old traditional way. There we go. So that's where bar two starts. I grab this, move it over, there's bar two. Now I'm gonna be in the ballpark. I like to use shift enter to always play from the left side of the of the uh, screen. So as you can see, you could go pretty fast and you could make it through the song. But there's an even faster, sort of dirtier and quicker way um, that you can get to the tempo that you want. Now I deleted these beat markers because what I want to do is tap the tempo in. I'm going to get my erase tool because you will not be able to erase that tool by selecting this track or this beat marker by selecting the track and hitting delete. So I use my erase tool to do it. All right, now I'm ready to go. I have a rough tempo, and what I'm going to do is just I'm going to tap in half notes. I, I like half notes uh, instead of quarter notes. Sometimes I'll do it just on the bar, um, just like I was doing with the beat mapping just now, because the less tempo changes you have, generally the better it's going to be. But if there's a lot of fluctuation within a measure, you got to be more accurate. All right, so now I'm going to do my best to tap along to the song. All right, so I'm just going to go that far so that I can show you how it's done. So now I have these half notes. I'm going to lock this empty position of this region by control clicking, empty lock because you don't want your MIDI to start drifting if you make any tempo changes. Go to beat mapping, and I'm going to say beats from region. Tell it that I was tapping in half notes and hit okay. If you don't see any tempo changes that are too, too radical, then it looks like you might've been okay. Now, one thing that's really important about doing this sort of thing is up here in the metronome, I had click only during count in. So it's clicking while recording, but only during count in. 
So I can turn that off and I can turn my click while playing on and kind of hear how close it came. Looks like it did okay. Um, so that's really, really quick and dirty way to be able to get yourself in the ballpark as far as tempo is concerned. And if I open up Apple Loops, and let's say I look at a, I'm gonna look at some of the 3-4 stuff and go to uh, all drums. Eh, and of course I don't really have anything <laughs> in 6-4. Oh, sure, why not? That's fun. Still a little bit off, but you get the idea. So basically the Apple loops will line up. If I opened up Drummer, he would line up as well. Now that's part one of the equation. If you wanted to have the guitar to be perfectly in time, what you can do is say, I'll take these two regions. I'll trim them by hitting command control T to trim by locators. And if you want to, you can go to edit tempo and you can actually export the tempo information that we recorded to the audio file. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, if you turn on flex time, now these audio files, you can see that it's totally gray because it thinks that this is the right, you know, these tempo changes were written to the file. So this knows that this audio will play natural, naturally when all of these tempo changes are introduced. But what I'm going to do now is change the tempo set, make a new set, call it fix, pull the tempo down so I'm in the ballpark, 89, and check it out. It's like magic. So basically what we did, the audio file was recorded without a click and the dumb digital audio workstation that it was recorded in, uh, be it Logic or Pro Tools or whatever, if you don't have a click, if it's not being played to a click, it's kind of like a tape machine. It's assuming that whatever the default tempo was that you had for that session, that's what's in the audio file. But when we do this little technique of getting the tempo, like being able to extrapolate the tempo from the recording, from the performance, and then we write it to the file. So now the file knows, oh, I speed up here and I slow down here and I speed up here and I slow down here. Then when we go to our tempo and we fix the tempo and we turn our flex time on, it knows when to speed up and slow down so that it's at a solid tempo. So there you go. Chill on that one for a while. Have fun. Talk to you later. Ciao. very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramind I, I've discovered electronic music and you know San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. 
when people get to the mind melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.